Hi and welcome again to Tech It Out. Well, we finally got here. This is the unboxing and first impressions for the Hisense H43M3000 4K Ultra HD TV. It comes with a load of features. It's a smart TV, so you can use the apps on it. You can access a web browser on it. You can also use it to record television to a hard drive. You can plug in a satellite dish or a normal antenna so that we receive digital broadcasting. The list just goes on and on. It's USB 3, HDMI 2, HDCP 2.2, which is the newest encoding for data protection. And there's lots and lots of other stuff. But first of all, we're going to just have a look at the actual components in the box. So this is the first. This is one of the stands. There's only two little stands that come with it. It's quite easy. Four little screws that attach the stands to the bottom of the television to make it stand up. And there's the other one, of course. So next we'll just stand it up a bit so that we can get at everything else. I pulled the box off. As you can see, the packing is quite good. It's quite a, a good hard and soft foam packing. And here we have the leads and booklets that come with it. So we just see what's in the bag. Just move it out the way a minute. We have the power lead first of all, the UK adapter, or UK plug I should say, not adapter, and one of these terrible wire ties again. I hate these things. I don't know why they still use them when there's so many other alternatives around these days. Quite a long lead, it's about two meters long. Then we have the remote control. And it's got some dedicated buttons right there. It's got Netflix, a YouTube, and a Wuku 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 TV. Don't know that one. It's, that's just the information on its power usage and what power rating it is. Something you have to have here in the UK. Batteries for the remote control, always handy. The screws to screw in the stands. And the various booklets that come with it. This is the warranty. It's a two-year warranty on this. Terms and conditions. As if I was going to read through all that. And of course the user manual with lots of vital information. So off it all goes into the drawer of obscurity. And on we go to looking at the television. So skip ahead again a little bit here so that we get the interesting bit. Not just me taking bits of foam off. One handy use for the bit of foam is to actually attach the stands on the bottom. And uh, while we're here you can see the power switch on the bottom here. So we're just going to put these stands on. Two screws in each and there's a straight edge and a, a rounded edge so you can get them in the right place. And then we do the other side. And now we've got it stood up on its stand, we can switch it on for the first time. And set it up. Straightforward setup, choose your language. We're going to need the remote control for this. Put some batteries in it. UK. 
agree to the terms and conditions. Of course, I've read them. And then we have to set up the Wi Fi. It's found all the various hubs in the area, as well as uh, one of the televisions. So we just put in the password and leave it connect. Finally, press OK once more. Now, it isn't plugged into an antenna as yet, so I'm going to skip the channels. We are now into the main menu of the settings. As you can see, you can use TV, cast to it from a mobile device, AV settings, component, SCART, HDMI 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1 and 2 are 30 hertz, and 3 and 4 are full 60 hertz at 4K. Now, as there's no antenna plugged in, it's no signal. So we'll go back into the settings. Now I've plugged my laptop in. So if I choose HDMI 3, and up on screen comes the output from the laptop. So I've just put in monkey123 as ever for my password. And as you can see, the screen is very bright, very clear. And this is just in 1080p at the moment. Now what I'm wanting to do is actually to go into YouTube and have a look for a 4K video and try out the 4K. Now of course you won't be able to see the quality for yourself. And we hit a problem here in that we can't get online. The television isn't connected for some reason. So we'll try again. No, it's still saying it's not connected. So we have a connection problem somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where as yet. Maybe Netflix. It's taken a very long time. No, another error. So, definitely a connection error somewhere. Let's go back then to the settings again. There's the App Store, and there are the built-in apps. Netflix, iPlayer, Amazon, YouTube. Not still not working, so what we're going to do is we're going to try going into YouTube through the laptop. See if we can find a 4K video this way to display on the screen itself. Is a test video for Panasonic. Strangely enough, if I remember rightly, Hisense has taken over Panasonic's TV division. So this could very well be a Panasonic panel that we're looking at. And as I said before, you can't really see the quality yourself. Of course, because you're looking at it in 1080p on YouTube. But looking at it here, it is absolutely stunning. It's so sharp, so precise. There's no fuzziness. The contrast is excellent. The colours are very vivid. And I haven't even changed any of the settings. This is just on the straightforward standard setting, straight out of the box. So that's via the laptop. We're still not getting any signal. So let's go through the menu, the settings menu. This is the network configuration. Go back into wireless, and you can see the various settings there. 
I'm going to system. Location, system pin, time, language, application, into advanced. You've got timeout and PVR. Now, PVRs, if you want to record from the television to a hard drive, it actually does that. All you've got to do is plug it in to one of the USB ports, and you can actually use it as a, a PVR to record your programs and then play them back later. HDMI CEC function is to play music, I believe, through one of the HDMI ports. We have our application settings, language settings, time settings, system pin, location, network we've already seen, then you've got your channel settings, the auto scan and so on, parental controls, and in the advanced list you've got a couple of things I'm not quite sure, EPG mark, common interface, that's for cards for pay TV, Sound settings, you've got your sound modes, standard, theatre, music, speech, and late night, which basically makes it a bit quieter. The louder bangs and whistles don't boom out quite so much, it automatically lowers them. And the same at the bottom there, total volume with normal and night mode does the same thing really. Then we have the advanced audio settings. Now it's got a lip sync setting here, which I've never seen before. And I'm not quite sure what that one's for, but maybe if you're playing back from a, a recording or from the net, the audio and the picture may go to sync and you can use that to sync them up. Picture modes, you've got standard, cinema, cinema night and PC. Now it'll be in PC game mode most of the time in myself because I'll be using it mainly as my monitor. But when I use it for Netflix or YouTube or whatever, I can easily switch it back to cinema mode. I have noticed a little bit of light when it's in a dark screen. Now you can actually adjust that out by changing the contrast but you have a, a darker contrast and the screen looks darker behind so we're going to try one more thing now i've switched the television off and switched it back on we're going to see if we can get into youtube this is getting further than it was so it looks like it's worked so switching off and switching on again cured the problem. We can go in and see how we search in here now. Find the try and find the same video as we were looking at a little earlier. Now this is coming direct rather than through the laptop. And again, the picture quality is absolutely spot on. I cannot fault it. I know I'm, I'm not an expert on audio visuals. So I can only say what I can see and what I think. And I cannot see any difference between this and any other high grade 4K screen. It's absolutely stunning. Vivid, clear, sharp, bright, or any other words that you'd care to use. Now, finally, for this part, we need to look at the connectivity and on the back you can see here you've got the common interface that's the place where you put the card for pay tv you've got two antenna ports one is for satellite one is for terrestrial digital you've got usb 2 ports there's two of them a service port well it speaks for itself headphone port and then two hdmi 30 hertz ports at the last at the bottom you've got a usb 3 port on the back then you've got your lan port You've got two further HDMI ports, these are the 60 hertz ports, and you've got a digital optical in, as well as component in. Finally, you've got this little S, which to be perfectly honest, I haven't got a clue what it is. There are all the connections on the back, 
I've been waiting, as you know, for the lead to use this television properly with my PC. Once I've used it for a while, both gaming and for streaming, I'll let you know how it's got on. But at the moment, I'm extremely pleased with it. It's incredible for the very low price it is. And the price is so low that you can actually buy 1080p sets for higher prices than this. I can't think of any other smart 4K TV that comes in at this price bracket with this quality. And as I said, if I'm right, this is a Panasonic TV which has been taken over by Hisense. And they seem to be doing a damn good job with it. Once again then, thank you for watching.